What's up you guys, Jaden here with the Moonlight Craftsman channel where we do everything metalworking, woodworking, DIY. On this video, we're gonna show you how to prevent warpage like this on thin stainless steel so you can get a flat piece of metal like this. Coming up. So in this video, I'm gonna quickly go over kind of what causes warpage when welding thin uh, stainless steel. Um, and one way to avoid the warpage, which is heat sinks. <clears throat> At the end of the video, I'll show you some examples of um, welding without a heat sink and with the heat sinks. <clears throat> so one thing to understand is that when you're welding it, uh, the metal is actually going to expand, but um, after it cools back down, it's actually going to shrink. It shrinks? <laughs> to smaller than what it was before. So if you take a look at this and the purple, that kind of represents two coupons and down the middle we got a weld and the red kind of represents the heat affected zone. And so, you know, without a heat sink or uncontrolled, you know, it could be wide, it could be irregular like we have here. And so, you know, here the heat affected zone is wider, here it's smaller, here it's wider. So, you know, in these, wider spots it's actually going to shrink more and so you know you're going to get more less more and that's you're going to get warpage so i'm just going to talk to you about uh, two common uh, materials to use for heat sinks that you might use and the first one is copper and the second one is aluminum <coughs> aluminum it's probably going to be what you're going to go to because it's cheaper and it still works pretty dang good uh, you'll be able to see in the test that I did um, that the ones on the aluminum actually worked a little bit better, I think because, you know, I didn't have them clamped down well enough to the <coughs> copper and it got a little bit of space under there when I was welding it and it didn't work. So, you know, uh, you know, having surface contact is very important. Um, and then that's one of the reasons why, you know, you're going to want to take a Scotch-Brite and make sure your heat sinks are clean and flat uh, because you're going to want as much surface area contact in as possible. Uh, another reason for cleaning it off, especially aluminum, uh, is that it oxidizes. So I've already cleaned off this surface, but uh, you know the back side, it's got, um, it's actually oxidized. You can tell it's aluminum, but that's actually aluminum oxide. And well, I'm about ready to say something electrical, so I'm going to put my electrician's hat on. Hopefully you can see that. But uh, I think I'm going to wear this from now on when I talk about electricity. But uncoincidentally, these are both uh, very good electrical conductors. So, you know, heat conductivity and uh, electrical conductivity are related. And so... If you're an electrician, you know that you probably know that uh, when using aluminum, hooking up aluminum wiring, you're gonna wanna use uh, antioxidant compound like this. And so that's going to um, ensure that you keep that conductivity, which is essentially the ability to transfer heat, which is what we're wanting to do. We're wanting to eliminate or reduce the amount of heat that's in our stainless steel. So, and then another thing, you know, you might be using these metals like copper and aluminum uh, to clamp to to your stainless steel because they're softer than stainless steel. So maybe to prevent scratches and whatnot. And so what you don't want is aluminum oxide on there, which is harder than stainless steel. They actually use it in sanding discs. So very important, you know, use a Scotch-Brite pad and, uh, you know, clean your surfaces off. So these are the pieces that I welded up uh, to kind of show how well a heat sink can help you. Um, I did these all just with a 035 stainless steel rod at 60 amps, trying to go the same speed because you know the heat input um, into the metal is also a function of time. So you know that's why sometimes um, you know you could have your heat turned down. And because you're having to go slower, you know, you could actually heat up the metal more. So, you know, that's just something to play with. 
<clears throat> but uh, as you can see, I just laid this over a piece of steel. I didn't clamp it down or anything, but you know, very warped, real bad. You know, this one's just over a flat piece of metal and a coupon, and then this is two coupons welded together, but uh, pretty bad. Uh, the aluminum, I must have had them clamped down pretty good. Like I was saying, the copper didn't do quite as well, but I think that that's just because I got a little bit of lift. Um, I was just using these clamps here and didn't have anything across the top. Uh, I was just kind of going a little fast, but um, you know, the aluminum ones did really, you know, pretty well. But if I would have had another heat sink over the top of it, they would have done even better. So that's kind of, you know, this is kind of one of the setups that you could have is where you got, you know, a piece underneath like this and then, <clears throat> you know, uh, two pieces on either side of your joint like this. And in this case, I even got them beveled a little bit. That way, um, you know, it can get the tungsten in there and get these as close to the weld as possible. So anyways, guys, hopefully that helps somebody out there. You know, you can also cut these in different shapes um, to fit different contours that you need. You know, obviously you want to get them as close to the weld as possible so they'll be more effective. And we'll see you on the next video, guys. Bye.